Hello friends, how are you? I'm Shanik Paradia. I'm back with another new video on Bessel guideline. Our today's video is in continuation of our previous video where we have discussed about standards approach for calculation of capital requirement for credit risk. As we have discussed there that there are three approaches to calculate capital requirement under internal rating based approach, which are slotting approach. Second is FIRB, which is foundation internal rating based approach and AIRB, which is advanced internal rating based approach. And in this video, we will discuss about slotting approach and this is also called specialized lending. So let's understand what type of lending are classified as specialized lending. So it is typically a lending to an entity, which is mostly special purpose entity SPE, where the borrowing entity does not have or have a little material asset. And therefore, there is no independent capacity of the borrower to repay the obligation apart from the income generated from these assets, which are financed by the bank. And as a result of this, the primary source of repayment of this obligation is only the income generated by this asset. And in such cases, Bank have substantial control over the asset and also over the income generated by these assets. Slotting approach is subdivided into five subclasses and these five subclasses of slotting approach are project finance, object finance, commodity finance, income producing real estate and high volatility commercial real estate. And now we will understand this one by one. So let's start with project finance. So project finance is a method of funding in which bank primarily looks at revenue generated by single project as a source of repayment of the loan and also as a security for the exposure. And the borrower is usually an SP that is not permitted to perform any functions other than developing and operating the project. This type of finance is usually for the large complex and expensive project that might include power plant, chemical plant, mines and telecommunication infrastructure. And in such transaction, the banks are usually paid out of money generated by the contract of the facility output, such as electricity sold by the power plant. And the consequences of such lending is that the repayment primarily depend on project's cash flow and also on the collateral value of project asset. So now let's look at object finance. So object finance refers to a method of funding for the acquisition of physical asset like ship, aircraft, uh, satellite, rail car, and here the repayment of the exposure is depend on cash flow generated by the specific asset that has been financed or placed, such as revenue generated by ship business instead of relying on credit worthiness of the borrower. And on a contrary, if the borrower's financial condition and debt servicing capacity enable it to repay the debt without undue reliance on the specific asset, then in that case, that exposure will be treated as collateralized corporate exposure. And now if we look at commodity finance, so commodity finance is referred to a structured short term lending to finance reserves, inventories or receivable of the exchange traded commodity like crude oil, metal, crop, where the obligation will be repaid from the sale proceed of the commodity and the borrower does not have independent capacity to repay that loan. And these type of structure are designed to compensate for the weak credit quality of the borrower and such structure reflect the lender's skill in structuring the transaction rather than credit quality of the borrower. And again, like object finance, if borrower's uh, financial condition and the debt servicing capacity enables to repay the debt without undue reliance on the specific commodity, then in that case, that structure will be treated as collateralized corporate exposure. So now let's move on to income producing real estate. So income producing real estate refers as method of providing funding to real estate, such as corporate building, co-working space, real estate, warehouse or the hotel, where the prospect of repayment and recovery on the loan depend primarily on the cash flow generated by these assets. The primary source of these cash flow would generally be lease or rental income or the sale of these assets. The distinguishing characteristics of IPRE versus the other corporate exposure that are collateralized by the real estate is that the strong positive correlation between the chances of repayment of the loan and chances of recovery in the event of default as both primarily depend on the cash flow generated by the property. So till now we have seen project finance, object finance, commodity finance and income producing real estate. So now let's look at high volatility commercial real estate. So as the name suggests, this is the lending to commercial real estate that exhibit higher loss rate volatility, which means higher asset correlation as compared to the other type of specialized lending, which we have discussed in our previous slide. And HVCRE are those exposure which are secured by those property which are categorized as highly volatile by the local supervisor. Or this also include 
where the financing for the acquisition development and construction of those property where again those are categorized as highly volatile by the local supervisor or this also include loan financing adc of any other property where at beginning of the financing repayment of the exposure is depend on either the future uncertain sale of the property or cash flow whose repayment is substantially uncertain which means the property has not yet been leased or occupied at a prevailing rate in that geographical market and commercial adc loan are exempted from hvcre treatment on the basis of certainty of the repayment of the obligation now let's look at capital requirement or risk weight for the specialized lending as you can see on the screen that the risk weight are different for hvcre and other specialized lending first we will look at risk weight for specialized lending other than hvcre and that range from 70% to 250% depending upon the rating however local supervisor can also allow bank to apply preferential risk weight for those exposure whose maturity is less than 2.5 years and this preferential risk weight is applicable only for strong and good assessment now if we look at risk weight of hvcre so here risk weight assigned are ranging from 95% to 250% depending upon the rating and here also supervisor allows or supervisor can allow banks to apply preferential risk weight for those exposure where the maturity is less than 2.5 years and again this preferential risk weight is available only for strong and good assessment i hope this video has helped you to understand slotting approach if you like the video please hit the subscribe button and please provide your feedback in the comment section below Thanks for watching and God bless you all.